Hi! In today's video, we will take a look at another interesting kit from IC Station. Again, they sent in a few more uh, of their items asking me to take a look. So in the next couple of weeks, I will be playing around with them and make a few more videos. Anyway, what I have here is a contactless switch. So judging from the description here, presumably it was designed to uh, operate LEDs such as under cabinet lighting. Before we power it on, let's uh, take a closer look at, uh, at this module and try to fig figure out how it works. So as you can see, actually, this is a very simple module. All it has is this uh, IR receiver uh, right here. And so presumably this is the IR transmitter diode. I haven't powered it on yet, so I don't know for sure, but I don't think this is a uh, indicator LED. This is a IR transmitter. So how this thing usually works is basically this IR uh, transmitter transmits a, a beam and reflects back, let's say, against your hand uh, and enters this uh, IR sensor. And thus, you know, depending on the pulse received, we either turn on or turn off the signal. And in this case, it doesn't really matter. As soon as it uh, receives something, it flips its state. So if it is on, then it turns it off. If it's off, then it turns it on. So I was actually trying to figure out what this chip is, but there's no marking. So we'll have to uh, figure out what this is. And uh, just by looking at the back of here, by the way, let's take a look at the back. So here we have this three pin device and you probably can't see but it is M7550H so this happens to be a uh, 5 volts low dropout regulator and uh, so judging from this the use of this regulator I'm assuming that this is a, probably a microcontroller and uh, so as you can see here we have a transistor this transistor is used to uh, power this uh, IR transmitter and uh, uh, to switch it on and off so what else is here and uh, so that's pretty much all it, there is to this uh, module now one thing interesting is that this module doesn't tell you which side is input which side is output and uh, that's one thing I generally find lacking on those uh, Chinese websites where uh, where they sell the product, but uh, the documentation is really uh, not there. So for people who have not been into electronics for very long, and it's kind of a daunting task trying to figure out how to determine the input and output, for example, uh, of this module. But uh, so I think it would be definitely beneficial if uh, it provides more information on the website. Now, actually for this one, it's actually not hard to figure out. So let me just let it focus for one second. So as you can see here, we have a uh, uh, the positive side. This trace connects to the positive side, okay? So the thing controlling whether or not the output has power is this little transistor. So it switches the ground. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see this, but this is a ground trace. Uh, uh, actually, ground trace is at the back here. So it's broken up by the, uh, the C and E, uh, the collector and em emitter of this Q1. So basically Q1 serves as a switch to switch the, uh, the output uh, depending on the signal received by this IR receiver. So I think that uh, you know, just by looking at this circuit, we know that this side is input and this side is the output. So now let's... Uh, uh, power it up and uh, take a look. So to see how well it works, let me uh, first move it forward a little bit because I don't want it, uh, the camera to reflect the IR signal back to the uh, to the board. So let me adjust it here. And uh, for the load, I actually um, I could have just uh, you know have a uh, string of LEDs. But uh, I have this uh, little module here. It's actually a reverse uh, avalanche oscillator. 
So if you don't know what that is, uh, I'm going to provide the link below and actually you can on my website and actually can build this re relatively easily. It's just a one resistor, one capacitor, one transistor and, and your LED. And it's uh, quite fun to, to build such a device. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook that up to the output. Okay. So w if the power is on, you will see it blinking. And for the power input, um, this device is rated for a load of a 1 to 9 watts. Now, um, I don't think it matters that much if it's a lower power rating, but uh, nevertheless, the actual power dissipation is limited by this uh, LED that switches the, uh, the load here. Okay. So now for the input, I'm gonna provide a uh, 17 volt. It's rated for seven to 18 volts. And I think that's just uh, the limitation of the uh, the actual uh, power regulator and uh, and the transistor itself. Now, this regulator actually is rated for input up to 33 volts, so I think it probably can handle a little bit higher input. But anyway, right now for for this particular test, let's just hook up a uh, 18 volts. So we have here. Um, I have the bench supply back there turned on and set to 18 volts. So let me turn it, hook it up here. All right, so now um, it's not blinking yet. So let's see if we can turn it on by put, placing our hands in front of the, uh, the sensor here. Wow, so you know, it did work and it turned on, and which is quite nice. And let's do it again. So we turn it off, try it again on off now i can see this uh, gonna become a little bit problematic if you you know if you just uh, put it uh, near uh where your hands can get and uh, you know if you just uh, start waving in front of it it will turn on and off it did say that uh, there was a response time of 0.5 second i'm not sure if it's if it's a uh, you have to put your hands in front of there for 0.5 seconds before it react, but it doesn't seem like that. See, it's really fast and it will just uh, um, respond. But I think that's okay if it's in a under cabinet lighting uh, situation where you put it on one side of, uh, let's say the kitchen cabinet and uh, um, you know your hands probably doesn't really go near that area that, uh, uh, that uh, often unless you want it to turn on and off the light. So let's see how far um, it, the detection range is. So my hand right now is uh, hovering here. It's about uh, roughly 25, 30 centimeters. And it doesn't, okay, so right there. So that's about the range it can uh, respond to my hand. So. That's actually very neat. I like it. Um, you know, this is, comes really in handy if uh, you, uh, which means you don't have to mount a switch for the IR uh, for your uh, LED lighting. You can just use this, uh, use your hand to control it. So now let's take a look at uh, uh, which microcontroller it is using right here. And uh, for that, I would use my multimeter to test which are the power pins. Now. The reason for that is actually there are not that many variations of the power pin arrangement. Sometimes, let me just zoom, well, I can't zoom it in because I wanted you to see the, uh, the meter here. Um, but anyway, for some of the microcontrollers, pin four and pin eight, these are the ground and the VCC. And for some it's one and eight, and uh, yet there are some others uh, that have uh, VDD and uh, ground pin switched. So let's uh, take a look at what this is. So let's first do 4, 8, minus 5. Okay, 1 and uh, 8. Minus 5, ah. So I reckon, uh, actually, hang on just one second. So let's see here, uh, 1 and 5. So it looks like the eighth pin is our ground. Now, for a eight pin device, um, that looks awfully similar. Well, awfully 
like a uh, PIC 12 series control microcontroller because in PIC 12 series the uh, pin 8 is your ground and the pin 1 is your uh, positive power supply so that is very uh, plausible and uh, and by the way the reason it was using this uh, uh, you know 30 either 38 kilohertz or some kind of modulated IR sensors is that uh, it re greatly reduced noise so for example if in the environment you have some other IR sources uh, it does not accidentally trigger this uh, circuit so only when it sees the uh, signal from this uh, transmitted uh, modulated signal that uh, would trigger the receiving end so for that let's take a look uh, using a oscilloscope to probe the signal to see if it, it is like that okay so now let's take a look at uh, the waveform as I mentioned earlier I think that uh, the IR signal is a modulated signal uh, because that is the way to uh, to reduce the noise so now let's take the oscilloscope and take a measurement at the uh, IR uh, output diode. Now, to do this, I will set the uh, the scope into a single shot mode. So basically, we just want to capture the single uh, pulse train. So we do a sweep, uh, single, and come on, single. And I would set the trigger level somewhere here so that it doesn't. Uh, To a false trigger so let me see here and we can uh, let it run again there we go so now let's take a look at uh, what's the uh, the frequency of this uh, signal okay so for that we will do cursor and we do on let me do manual okay so let's actually shift that down a little bit. So here we go. So the first one we want to look, let's just say it starts here. And the second one. So this is one period of that, uh, of the pause. So as you can see here, um, I'm not sure if you can see, let me just zoom in a little more. So right now we're roughly, uh, this suggests that it's 36.8 kilohertz. So it's a roughly the, uh, the in a range of the IR transmitter and receiver. So now let's uh, take a look at, uh, so now let me uh, change this back to run and actually change the sweep to uh, auto. Okay, turn off the cursor. Uh, mode, sorry about that, mode off. Okay. So now actually let's just measure this live to see to see that again. So for that I'm going to uh, hook up the the ground and uh, let's increase the time base here. So as you can see here, we have these pulse trains uh, generated. So as you can see here, that each burst uh, here is that modulated uh, signal being transmitted. So anyway, I think this is a really neat uh, kit and, uh, and it's re relatively simple and it's uh, pretty elegant. And as you can see, it works actually reasonably well. So I will provide this link to this kit on IC Station's website down below in my uh, in the comment area. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and it, if you did enjoy the video, please give it a big thumbs up and considering subscribing to my channel. I will catch up with you next time.